You are watching Shoutcraft, your esports gateway drug, with myself, Total Biscuit. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Shoutcraft. My name is Total Biscuit, and we've got Sid in the pink trunks playing Zerg, facing off against the one and only Psionic Reaver, who is in the stylish orange today as Terran. Now, the first thing you'll note there, right down at the bottom, is that he uses every single one of his hotkeys. It's an interesting strategy right there, binding all of the hotkeys, and you can see that most of them are actually bound to his command center. I imagine that's just to make it a little bit easier to go back there, and then, of course, he can replace them with something more appropriate later on. He's got a couple of SCVs bound up as well, so he's got that nice individual control. Now, this is the Lost Temple map. Very nice map for 1v1, as well as 2v2, a classic considered by many, and nothing particularly unusual here from what I can tell. We've got Sonic Reaver starting off with a supply depot, so we're not seeing any early barracks, which means no early reapers. Fair enough, that is a reasonable idea. Those cheese strategies, as they're called, are also considered to be a little bit all-in. They're the kind of thing that will get you in a lot of trouble if you don't pull it off properly, and are frowned upon by certain people. Now, those of you who are not familiar with the new Patch 10, well, you'll also notice in the top right-hand corner of the screen we've got a brand new food indicator, or supply. It's actually a tiny little cute little supply depot. Very nice, isn't it? And the Zerg have their own as well, which is very nice. And you can also see that we've got some insignia around there, these little decals around the hatchery. These are supposed to be included on a variety of different buildings and vehicles. Thus far, only really the hatchery has it particularly visible. All right, got spawn pool going up there. No big surprises, and the block is in progress for Psionic Reaver. He's going to sort that out and go in for the long haul, both of our competitors have noticed that there's nothing particularly unusual going on. And that's absolutely fine. So no early aggression there. So why don't we uh, fast forward it just a little bit here. And uh, we can get to the action a little bit quicker. These first few minutes never known to be the most exciting thing ever. The spawning pool plus the extractor going up there. And still no extractors for Sonic Reaver. Quite unusual there. I would imagine that's because he is spending money on an early command center. An expansion early on for the Terran is... It's not unusual, but it's certainly a little bit risky considering... I've got a couple of Zerglings coming in there from Sid. Not that they're going to be able to do an awful lot. He's managed to bring them around nicely, avoiding the trap of the bunker there. Sonic backing off, and he's going to try and harass that SCV, and he should be able to do a reasonable job of it. Down it goes, and he's going to bring the second one there. So first blood goes to Sid, quickly followed up by one splattered little Zergling on the floor. He wants to go and have a look and see what's going on, but it's not going to happen, thanks to the Terran block and a number of Marines going up there as well as a second barracks. Now, there's the expansion for Sid. Funnily enough, a Zerg expansion not going up before the Terran. Not something that you see all that often. He's upgrading quite quickly to Lair, so he's not going to be putting too much stock in early Zerglings by the looks of it. Going to go for something a little bit more aggressive, a little bit higher tech. We can expect to see maybe some Mutalisks, possibly some Hydralisks quite early on in the game. Now, sinox has got plenty of Marines now, and he's actually salvaged and destroyed his bunker there to get the money back, simply because he knows that those Zerglings are going to be able to avoid the fire line of the bunker. There's no point in having it there. Might as well get the extra resources. Bear in mind, that's reclaiming 100, and that's two Marines that you can buy with that. And he's not going to have those Zerglings run around like that. He's going to splat them in short order. So that's a nice cost been reaped there on the Zerg units. We'll have a look at the units right now. Units lost thus far. You will note that there's been about eight Zerglings going down there, so that's not too good at all. That said, of course, Zerglings don't cost all that much. Nothing really to worry about. What you'll also notice in the new patch 10 is that the queens move way slower outside of the creep, so that can be very problematic for those of you who like to queen rush. That would be none of you, I would imagine. Knowing somebody, they're actually going to come up with a strategy that involves a lot of queens, but it's economically not viable. It's a stupid idea. Right, there's the early spine crawler going up there, so no early marine harassment from Sionic Reaver, unless he wants to get speared on that. Plenty of Zerglings heading up from Sid, and he's going to have a look and see what he can do. He wants that early expansion, and to be honest, I don't blame him. It's a delicious-looking cherry that he would love to pop at this point in time. 
It's not going to happen, though. He's got a Marauder up already and plenty of Marines. It's a nice little assault force, and the Zerglings, without the extra speed upgrade, are not going to be able to flank around. Indeed, they are about to get caught. It's funny, actually, that Sid actually got caught by that, considering he had the Zelnaga Watchtower. He could see it coming. He shouldn't have taken that fire, and to be honest, I wouldn't go back in there either. Yes, kill the SCV, that's very nice, but if you're going to lose four or five Zerglings in the process, then why even bother with it? I'll have a look and see what Sonic Rib is doing in terms of technology. He already has the Marauder Concussion Missile upgrade, and he's going in for a little bit of attack on the expansion. He's always spotted the spine crawler. He doesn't want to go in there. There's that speedling upgrade I was talking about. So he's going to be able to flank around and harass with that. Second spine crawler coming up there as well. Sonic Rib is just going to ignore it completely, head into the main base and see what he can do. And he's focusing fire on the Speedlings, not doing too good a job. Speedlings reaping a terrible toll, and down it goes. Very nicely played there by Sid. Very resource effective attack. He really wants that Zelnaga Watchtower, doesn't he? Zergling's a big fan of that kind of thing. Now, the expansion is getting... Uh, well, it's still juicy, honestly. It's not particularly well defended. He's got plenty of Marauders there with the Concussion Missile upgrade. And these are now cheaper thanks to Patch 10. They were a little bit expensive up until now. You now spend 50 Minerals and 50 Gas to get them. So, a little bit more attractive. It also takes a little bit less time to get. Now, there's an, a Reaper coming up for Psionic. And a lot of people tend to use Reapers for the purposes of early game harassment. That's evidently not going to be happening here, but they can be used as rather effective scouts. He's going to have a look around and see what he can see, maybe jump into the base, do a little bit of damage. Now, this is what Sid has come up with. He's come up with a very unusual strategy. He's going to start using infestors now, which were buffed in the patch 10. We're about to see how effective they can be. They have a number of abilities that are effectively spellcasting units, and he's using the fungal growth there, which locks those marauders down, does a lot of damage, and he's able to swarm them with the speedlings. Extremely effective there. He's going to have to go and gut that mineral line. He's already backed off the majority of the SCVs. SCVs actually trapped in there. Sonic really needs to get them out of there, unless... Oh, he's going to lose them if he doesn't do anything about it. Down goes one Supply Depot as well. Infested trying to back away. He's managed to get his Orbital Command up into orbit, as it were. Get it out of the way. Great damage there done by Sid. That expansion effectively denied until Sonic Reeve is able to put up a reasonable force to reclaim it. He's finally got those SCVs out of the way. And to be honest, I'm surprised Sid didn't go for them. Lose a couple of Speedlings, okay. But to be honest, it's worth it to take out that many SCVs. That was very nice indeed. Sonic Reaver lost a ton of units and is really smarting in terms of his actual economy. And he's going to go for a little bit of technology now as well. He's going for an early Viking and he's going to grab a Hellion as well. Now, if we have a look at the state of the economy right now, you can quite clearly see that as a result of dropping a couple of mules, he is able to catch up, but only barely the economy of Sid streaming ahead there with a uh, second expansion going up to the west of the Lost Temple. Very nice indeed. And we have a look at what technology he's got coming up. He's got that Infester, and I imagine he's looking, yes, he's already managed to get one of the two upgrades available. That's very nice indeed. He's going to go in again as well. And there's that Fungal Growth once again, and and spitting out a couple of infested Terrans at the rear just to give it a shot. Trying to swarm those Marauders. There's just a few too many for the Speedlings to handle. A lot of good damage done there. There's those infested Terrans. You don't see them all that often. Taken apart in short order by the Marauders. A lot of damage being done there still. He's going to try and back off with the Infestors. I wouldn't want to be close to that either. Once your Infestors are out of mana, they don't have an attack of their own. So it's not worth really going in there. Now, finally, Medivac support for Psionic Reaver. That will help an awful lot. And he's managed to land that Orbital Command again. Thrown up a couple of mules, and he's streaming ahead in terms of his income. This will give him the opportunity to catch up. Another Viking coming up as well. Another Hellion. Now he's going for an Armory, which will allow him to grab some upgrades for those vehicles and aircraft. Gain a little bit of superiority, a little bit of an advantage. The nice thing about the Armory is that you can get a situation whereby the units end up more powerful than you would expect and he's managed to drive back to those guys there but he stimmed the marauders and the marines big damage being done on both sides trying to drop down those infested terrans oh that's messy down goes an infester yep that's not going to happen whatsoever it's a nice mix the medivac support really helping there that fungal growth is going to work but the speedlings aren't enough to really follow through the uh, Marauders standing their ground, and they're going to go in again. There's the Stim. He's going to be able to chase down his Infestors. They're going to be nailed in short order. That is expensive. Down it goes. Not very good at all. Additional Speedlings moving in, deciding that it's not worth the hassle. And I can't blame him either. 
That's the problem with the Infestors. They are not quick. If you catch them on the hop, then you can nail them down in short order. If you don't have any energy, then you won't be able to use that Fungal Growth, which is absolutely perfect for eliminating anything that's chasing you. The problem is you've got no energy, then you can't use it, and you are just going to be taken down by anything that's pretty quick. Sid with a little bit of a revenge attack there. Now, if we look at units lost, it's looking a little bit more even. In fact, almost identical. Very pricey. Sid almost in three figures of units lost. Not unusual for Zerg, particularly with Zerglings. They are absolutely what I would consider a little bit of a cannon fodder unit. You overwhelm with weight of numbers. There's additional command center moving over. He's going to go for the island there. That's a reasonable idea. You, you see that Viking right there? And one might wonder why exactly it's there. Well, there's a number of reasons. Of course, he is able to spot the uh, expansion on the other side. And I would imagine what he's going to do is he's going to put a couple of siege tanks deployed right there. Use the range. Use the view of the Viking to go in. Another engagement moving in there. Going after the speedlings. I do not fancy the chance of the Zerg right here. That is a lot of infestors. But to be honest, that's a huge number of infantry right there. He's able to nail down one of them with the fungal grip and that's fine, but those infestors are going to die unless he gets them the hell out of there. One down already, nailed down by the concussive shells of Psionic Reaver. Now, to be honest, I would expect Sid to vary up his strategy at this point. The infestors are a neat trick, but to be honest, the speedlings are not enough. He's going to have to try something else. He's got a spire, so I can expect to see some mutalists coming out relatively shortly. That's going to vary things quite nicely. That'll be a little bit of a game changer. That said, he does have that one Viking, and I imagine he's got a few more. Yeah, he's got plenty of medevacs there. It's a big blob of Marines, Marauders, with a couple of Hellions in there for good measure. We'll have a look at the unit composition right now before the next engagement, which is going to be quite shortly at this rate. Both these plays incredibly aggressive. We've got 37 Zerglings there, 8 Infestors. That's the most Infestors I've seen in a very, very long time indeed. Only a single Viking, so he's evidently not going for air superiority. He just wants to have a look and see what that expansion's doing. We're going to have a meet in the middle right here. Now, Sid obviously wants to avoid this unless he's in a good situation. He wants to drop the fungal growth. He's going to try and divide and conquer there. He's managed to nail back there as well. Very, very nice move there. A lot of damage being done to the medivacs. One down already. In he goes. He's nailed them down. He's backing away. He doesn't want to lose too many units right now. And he also has eight mutalisks. Now, he may have been repulsed the first time, but the fact of the matter is that those marines are dead and those mutalisks are really going to make the difference now. And here they go. Right, that's going to be the game changer. Marauder Heavy strategy, no good against Mutalists, being absolutely gutted. Oh, not good at all for Psionic Reaver. Now, if I was Sid, I would be pushing the advantage. The problem is now, you've lost all of those speedlings. You've got absolutely no way to stop the enemy from attacking your slow-moving infestors. Now, right now, he's going to try and flank around, see if there's a place that he can do some damage with the Mutalisks. He can kill a single Hellion, but to be honest, I wouldn't bother. I'd be trying to go for his base right now. We'll go and have a look. Yeah, he could go in there and do massive damage to at least the supply line, if not the mineral line. Let's see what he has planned with them. Obviously, the Mutalisks have taken a little bit of damage. He's going to meet them up with yet more Mutalisks there. 14 total. That's a very nice force indeed. question is, do you want to walk into that gauntlet right there? Right now, I would actually... There aren't all that many units, but he's being a little bit gun-shy. He's going to back off, wait for a little bit of reinforcements. He goes for the expansion. Doesn't work out so well. Able to take out the Viking. Loses one Mutalist by the looks of it. Not too costly. Got an additional force. All Marines, Marauders, many Vax coming in right here. He's going to chase them down. Oh, that is not good for the Terran whatsoever. A swarm of death. Oh, oh massacre. Not good at all. Infestors getting nailed, though. So, to be honest, that was rather costly for Sid. He should have brought the Infestors back and kept them the hell out of the way. Now the lack of Infestor support, he's going to have to go in there, but he's got, Cyrus got the anti-air, but the Mutalisks really outnumber them. He doesn't want to go in, and yet I really would. He's got nothing. You've got to get aggressive right now. If you don't, everything will go to hell. The problem with allowing the Terran player with the two expansions going at full blast is that he's going to be able to rebuild that force in short order. Look at how many barracks he's got. Going for a very infantry-heavy strategy. And with the medevacs, they're made infinitesimally. More effective. Yeah, it's a nice bunch, but what are you going to do with it? Back it up with some more Infestors, that's fine. But come on, you got to get aggressive. If you don't do it, you're going to run out of time. And he's going to move in right again here. It's going to be messy. The Speedling's going to take the initial hits. You, he's just going to go in there. He's going to lock him down, do that damage. He doesn't want to do it. 
Sonix now got two upgrades on both of those Marines, as well as the Marauders. It's an incredibly heavy strategy in terms of the amount of damage they're able to do. Way more than you might expect. Dropping the fungal growth, but if you can't follow up the damage, then the medevacs are just going to heal it. Gonna be of no help to anyone whatsoever. He goes in once again. Those mutalisks are gonna have to go after the Marines quickly. Fungal growth doing plenty of damage there. But the mutalisk being taken down, ripped apart by the Marines. Gotta take out the last couple of Marines, and then he can really go to town on that expansion. That's exactly what's gonna happen. More Marines stimmed in there, charging at a second wave, nailing those mutalisks. Completely caught out of position. They're gonna have to run away with their tails between their legs. He's bringing in some reinforcements, additional speedlings, and infest this. He is not letting up at all. And in he goes again, but I don't fancy their chances. It's not good. Look at the numbers there. Using the stim pack ability to. Try and catch them there, and he's gonna nail that Infestor if he's not careful. Barely getting away. Now, if I was Sid, I wouldn't want to be charging into that line over and over again. One way or the other, it is going to be unpleasant. You don't want to go in there. You don't want to take on the Terran on their own terms. They're great at fighting with standing armies. They've got the ranged advantage that you do not have right now. Still Sid going for it. He's got the economic advantage. We can have a look at his income right here. 55 harvesters, in fact, way more SCVs. It's always good to have a lot of spares because then you can instantly move on to another expansion. But only two for the Terran player and three active for the Zerg. Additional income will come in, of course. That is a swarm and a half. Looking forward to see what happens with it. Now, one might wonder why you've got so many overlords there. Well, it's nice to be able to fight under overlords somehow because if you make the mistake of auto-attacking, of course, the marines could end up going after them and they absorb a butt of the impact. Can give you the edge that you need and we're moving in once again, going in perhaps for a final charge. There's going to be a reckoning one way or the other. It's a big swarm. He doesn't want to hang back. He's going to... Gonna have to lock them down. Nail them down right there. There's the fungal growth. Swarm in with the speedlings. Eat as many of them as humanly possible. Oh, he's got the marines up there, though. They're tearing a new one for that mutalisk bunch right there. Bunch of infested terrans in the background. Oh, fire, death, and destruction. Anyone want some charbroiled infested? That's exactly what you're gonna get. Not good at all. Absolutely annihilated. Very well played on the top of the hill there with those marines. That's the great thing about that high ground. And now Sionic Reba is not going to rest on his laurels. He's going to counterattack using the Medivacs, using that mobility. He's going to be able to catch Sid right up out of position. And what's Sid going to be able to do about it? I really don't rate his chances. We can look at it. There's no defense there at all. What are you waiting for? That's all I can ask. Five full medevacs of death and destruction going to be raining down on the Zerg base. And of course, he's scanned. He's found very little of interest. And down they go. Oh, God damn. That is unpleasant. Actually, didn't stand a chance in hell. Force is caught way out of position there. He's just going to pop them back in the medevacs and move on. He's going to be able to gut any expansion at his leisure. We have a look at the units here. Eight mutalisks. Well, that would be able to do the job if he's able to catch it. But the fact of the matter is they're being caught out of position. He's in the main base right now, absolutely gutting the technology. He's got nothing he can do about it. Those infestors, the speedlings, all out of position. He's going to try and move them back now. But to be honest, it really is too late. I'm honestly surprised to see Psionic not going for that mobility drop strategy earlier. But to be honest, considering the amount of aggression that was being put on there and cut off. Very nicely done. Cut off as they try to retreat. Hunter Seeker missile. Oh, it's. Oh, is he going to get it? Oh, that could have been worse. Very nice with the uh, Raven there. Taking out a big chunk of the Zerg, to be honest. Ah, oh, yeah. Sid is absolutely gutted here. GG. He has given up fantastic play there by Psionic. Very good. Always nice to see the Infestors at play. But to be honest, he needed to vary up his strategy. He needed to maybe drop at some point in the base, maybe drop a Nidus Worm in there, something for that, to that effect. But going headlong into the breach over and over again did not do so well for him. Now, if we have a look at the spending, pretty much equal. Massive technological advantage by Sonic Reba, and it showed at the end of the game. Sid sticking in the mud a little bit with the strategy. It was entertaining, don't get me wrong, but to be honest, he really couldn't do an awful lot at the end there. He was caught completely out of position. That Infestor army was just too slow to react. Very nice indeed. Ladies and gentlemen, you have been watching Shoutcraft, and my name is Total Biscuit. Thank you to Sid and Psionic 
Reaver. We'll catch them in the next game. Good night.